Welcome to WatchGuard's Daily Security Byte. I'm Corey Knockreiner. Today's story is an update on the VTech breach story from earlier. You probably remember just two days ago when I shared information about the VTech breach. These are the folks that actually make a internet connected kids toy, basically a little tablet. In any case, they had a breach and Motherboard uh, had a scoop on this story where they shared that a whole bunch of both parent and children data was stolen from this China-based company. In any case, there's two new updates to this interesting story. The first update is that more kids' data was affected by this breach than first reported. According to Motherboard, they guessed around 200,000 kids' records were stolen in this breach. But according to VTech themselves, they admitted that around 6.3 million uh, records were stolen that included children data. The other big update is Motherboard was able to score another exclusive interview with the hacker himself to basically figure out his motivation. So here's his story. Basically, he started just as a user that was trying to hack the VTech InnoTab. And when I use hack in this context, I don't mean in any sort of criminal way. There's a group of hackers that just try to reverse engineer and play with a lot of the internet of things or computer devices out there. It's very popular to take devices that are based on an Android operating operating system, try to root them, and then get them to do things that they maybe weren't designed to do. That way you can buy a very inexpensive kid's toy, but turn it into a full Android tablet. And there's many forums out there that help you hack these kind of devices. In any case, this particular uh, hacker was actually accessing one of those forums and learning about the InnoTab device. And in doing so, he also started poking at the InnoTab services, all the web services that companies like VTech point out to support their devices. like the Kid Connect service I mentioned before. In any case, it turns out my hunch was right. He found an old school SQL injection vulnerability in one of these websites. And by leveraging this flash-based SQL injection vulnerability, he was able to gain root on a server, which then he used to pivot to other servers in the network, including uh, presumably the database server. So the guess was correct. This entire breach was due to a SQL injection flaw. So the main point of this update is really to inform you if you run a website out there, you should worry about web application vulnerabilities like cross-site scripting and SQL injection. Many dynamic websites use a database on the back end, and when your web developers create applications that interact with these databases, if they don't do so using secure coding practices, they might offer opportunities for bad guys to take advantage of flaws like SQL injection. And as we see in this incident, you can use SQL injection to gain full access to a very important back-end data database. So while a lot of people think that cross-site scripting and SQL injection are old flaws, they're still alive and well today. So if you run an e-commerce site, definitely get your developers to look into secure coding practices. Don't have time to detail it all, but if they start by going to OWASP.org, they'll learn a lot. That's it for today's story. Thank you for watching.